The 4090 is an overclocking beast. You can get way over 3 gigahertz with these cards. Just any card, load it, overclock it, you'll be getting insane performance. But at what point does this graphics card stop scaling? So the 4090 released when it was starting to get cooler outside and what that meant was we were a little bit more okay when overclocking these cards of, oh, okay, yeah, we can have a little bit more power. We can push a little bit more voltage. We're fine with that. We're going to enjoy our higher clock speeds and our slightly higher FPS. It'd be really cool. And it heats the room. But now as it's starting to get warmer outside, you don't want to have be having 400 watt power draw in Cyberpunk while you're playing the game. Instead, you're going to want something that gets you really good performance still, but isn't going to be heating up your room so much that you don't enjoy gaming. So I set off to figure out what is the scaling of a RTX 4090? So I did multiple tests running different voltage points and seeing which one does perform the best. So we tested anywhere from 875 millivolts, which is the lowest voltage that I could set in MSI Afterburner, all the way to 1.1 volt, which is the max I could set. These were tested on the Strix XOC BIOS, which is 1,000 watts. If you want me to see how much power I can pull out of a 4090, check the video out in the top right. I really pulled a bunch. So we tested 875 millivolts, 950 millivolts, 1 volt, 1.05 volts, which is the max you can go without setting the core voltage slider and afterburner, and then 1.1 volts. Found the max clocks with them, and then ran three benchmarks times by extreme to get a raw score testing the graphics score modern warfare 2 at 1440p low just to be like okay maybe this isn't a fully gpu bound title let's see really what is the performance here and then we also ran cyberpunk 2077 cyberpunk 2077 recently got a redone rtx with like the overdrive update this really hurts an RTX 4090 even. And that was what we tested to see, okay, is a full GPU bound scenario. It's pulling like 600 watts in this benchmark, first of all. What does it perform like? If you have an RTX 4090 or you enjoy overclocking GPUs, comment down below, hit the like button and subscribe for more content also. The rest of the stuff isn't really important, the rest of the specs, but 1300K, 700 megahertz RAM, stuff like that, you know, simple PC. But what I was really hoping to see was how much performance can I gain or how much lower can I get my power draw while still getting better numbers than stock? So let's get right into the benchmarks now. Starting out here with the raw time spy extreme score. This was the graphics score, by the way. So I didn't look at CPU and anything. So CPU does not affect any of this. So looking at here, stock is about 20,000 points. 875 millivolts drops that by about 6.6% .6 to around 19,000. This is still faster than RTX 4080, by the way. I did check that. So even if you want to super power limit your, or I guess voltage limit your card, you're still going to be getting really good performance compared to other graphics cards on the market. But for $1,500, I really wouldn't recommend this unless you really are in like an ITX build or really hot climate. 950 millivolts runs basically the exact same as stock about one percent lower so you're not really gonna notice that one percent one volt and 1.05 volt are basically the exact same i don't know why but they are 2.8 percent faster than stock though so you are getting a very good performance uplift there nothing is sane but 2.8 percent for this is pretty good and then 1.1 volt is 5.4 percent faster we're gonna get into the power next but just because it performs better doesn't mean you want to run it. Let's look at the power though. Here we have the power draw for our times by extreme scores. So I showed average and max. Looking at the red, that's the max. Look at 1.1 volt, 621 watts max. Now, if you're running a stock BIOS, the most you'll get is a 600 watt limit. This is a thousand watts. So just because I want to make sure that there were no power limits in here. Stock's pulling about 525 watts. 1 volt, which as you saw in the last benchmarks, performs basically the same. You're dropping about 50 watts on your average power. And max, you're also losing a you're losing about 40 watts. So that is significantly more power efficient. 1.05 volts in stock are basically the same. But 1 volt right now is looking really, really strong. Here we are with Cyberpunk 2077. And all these results are very, very close just because the FPS isn't extremely high. So I want to look at the lows, really. But 
looking at the one volt here, it's once again like the best option next to the 1.1 volts, but you're gonna be getting a really hot room with 1.1 volts. One volt drops it insanely more. Really what I would recommend though, probably is just going with one volt. One volt looks like the best option here. The lows do kind of fluctuate, but 875 millivolts, that five FPS, that's a big percentage just because five FPS over 60, that's, that's a lot of FPS you're losing. That's something that you will notice this is once again also why G-Sync is a big deal. For the last benchmark here, we do have Modern Warfare 2, and 1.1 volt is the winner. Now, in this game, you might want to run 1.1 volts, especially if you are running like a 1440p, 360 hertz monitor. You're going to want that really high FPS and get the FPS as high as you can. Also, this game isn't extremely power hungry on the graphics cards. You're not going to be pulling 500 watts in this game. You might pull 300 watts max from the GPU. So for this game, I can see an argument for 1.1 volts, but if you have a lower refresh rate monitor, like let's say you have a 240 Hz 1440p, go ahead and just run a lower voltage and you'll be fine. You'll get basically the same FPS or it won't matter that you're getting that extra FPS and the lower power draw and lower temp will be a bigger deal to you. What I definitely recommend for most people is just run a one volt overclock. I'm about to show you in MSI Afterburner how I set a one volt overclock just because the way I do it is a little bit different. I don't like lock cores. I just kind of, the way I set it is a little different. But so that's going to be definitely what I would recommend doing, especially now as it's getting hot. If you have something like a G Sync monitor, especially one with a G Sync module, which is the best, you're going to be okay with, okay, maybe I'm losing 10 FPS. You have G-Sync too, especially if you watch my other video too where I talk about capping your FPS, you're not going to need that high of a GPU overclock because your GPU won't be utilized as much. That's also going to lower power as well. So let me just show you how I like to set the core voltage in MSI Afterburner. Okay, so here we have MSI Afterburner. This is, going to, this is what it's going to look like as soon as you open it up. So I'm going to max out the power and the temperature limit. I'm on a silent BIOS right now, by the way. Um, I'm not going to max out the core voltage because we're going to be showing you a one volt overclock. So memory clock is to 1000. Hit apply and then for core clock. I like to lower this all the way. Let me show you why. So for one volt, I'm going to take this one here. And I'm going to say, let's say I want to run just even a stock frequency for me. So that's 2805. So here you go. Just set the voltage here. You're going to hit control F to open this up. And I'll click up to the voltage that you want. Then you want to hit the check mark and then it will go flat. Now, when you load up a game, you will have no issues going, oh, is it at the right voltage? This will make sure that it maxes out at 1.1 volts and also allows the GPU to downclock on idle so that you save a little bit more power as well. There you have it. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you have a graphics card and you just want the most power efficiency, Definitely, this is something that you want to take a look at. Do your own testing too. Maybe see, oh, maybe I get basically the same performance at 950 millivolts as I did at stock because you might have a better bin than me. So definitely do your own testing. But for most people, one volt is going to be the best. This works on every GPU as well. But I will see you guys later. Peace.